we love you more than anything. Lord, we love you more than anything. Lord, we love you more than life itself. Oh, God, our Father, you told us in your word to call you our Father. God, we come to you once more and again to tell you thank you. God, we come at this hour to tell you thank you. God, before we ask you anything, we want to tell you thank you. For God, you said in your word, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. God, we come tonight to tell you thank you. God, we thank you for allowing us to make it once again to the house of prayer. God, many have transitioned between our morning service and now. But God, you allowed our golden moments to roll on once more. And for this, God, we tell you thank you. God, we thank you for our ups and our downs, our highs and our lows. Because God, you are able to do all things but fail. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, as we come into this hour of deliverance, as we come into this hour of revival, God, we ask now that you breathe on us once again. Breathe on us breath from heaven. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Revive us again, God. Revive us again, God. Revive us again, God. Revive us again, God. And we shall be revived. Wake us up again, God. And we shall be awakened. Shake us up in the spirit. And we shall be shook. Now, Lord, now, Lord, we call on your name. Father, we stretch our hand to thee. None of the help we know if thou would draw thyself from me. Oh, Lord, whither shall we go? Guide us over, thou great Jehovah. Heal them through this barren land. We are weak, Lord, but thou art mighty. Hold us with your mighty hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Eat us so we won't no more. Fall fresh now, God. Fall fresh on us now, God. Fall fresh, Lord. Fall fresh now in the name of Jesus. Guide us right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Say to the Lord, rebuke him. Say that you've been busy all week long. Say that you've been busy all day long. But we find you now. We find you now. We find you now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. We find you now. Back to where you came. We find you now. Take your depression. Take your oppression. Take your suicide. Take your anxiety. Back to where you came. Right now. Now we command you, Satan, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the blood of Jesus. You're not welcome now. You're not welcome in our homes. You're not welcome in our jobs. You're not welcome in our schools. You're not welcome in our church. Right now, Lord, we call on your name. Come in the room, God. Come in the room, God. Throw your weight around. Heal, we shall be healed. Deliver, we shall be delivered. Set free, we shall be set free right now, right now, right now, right now. Father, we call on your name, we call on your name, covering your blood, your blood cover, your blood cover. Your blood cover, 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 your blood cover. make home now, make home now. Make whole now, heal now, deliver now, set free now. In the name of Jesus, we won't leave like we came, no longer bound. But who the Son has set free is free indeed. No more chains, no more oppression. Free us, Lord, and we shall be free. Make us whole now. Hi, Jesus. Hey, Jesus, we call on your name now. Jesus, we call on your name. Jesus, 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 the comfort of my soul, Jesus, my midnight rider, Jesus, my company, oh God, Jesus, 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 the more we call you, the better we feel, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, save the day, we deliver now, the high out of a horse, the high out of a horse, Oh Jesus, we call. Oh Jesus, and we call on your name in Jesus' name. Please remain standing for the scripture. Scripture is coming from.
from Romans chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word.
Anybody gonna trust him? They trust me. Oh, trust. If you would only, if you would only, if you would only, only trust me. Anybody gonna trust the Lord tonight? Can we give our God a praise? The God that we trust, the God that we love, the God that we adore, the God that we worship. Come on, let's give him a praise. Let's give him a glory. Let's give him honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust. In the Lord, I will trust in the Lord until I die. Till I die. Anybody know that? Oh, I will trust in the Lord. Oh, I will trust in the Lord. Oh, I. Going to stay on the path. Oh Lord, oh I'm going to stay on the path. Anybody gonna play right there? I'm going to stay on the path until I die. And then everybody may not treat me right, but I'm going to treat everybody. I'm going to treat everybody. Anybody going to do that? I'm going to treat everybody. Yes, I will. I'm going to treat everybody. Until I die. Until I die. Oh, I'm going to create with my Oh yeah, yeah, I'm going to create with my right. Oh Lord, I'm going to create with my right until I die. Let's sing that one more time. I'm going to trust in him. Come on, clap your hands and say, I will trust. In the Lord, oh, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Just clap our hands for a moment and praise God.
God. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God and there's nobody like him. Let's praise our God one more time. Amen. Let's praise our God one more time. Praise God. This is the first time since the pandemic that we are trying to relaunch our choir. And I want to say they did a wonderful job tonight. Amen. When uh, things have been dormant for some time, it takes a little while to get some traction. But uh, we had about six or seven voices on the choir tonight, amen. Every fourth Sunday night, this is how we're going to build the choir again. Every fourth Sunday night, during this service, the choir will be going forth. On Sunday mornings, we have our praise and worship team, but on, on the fourth Sunday nights, the choir. So if you want to be a part of the choir, uh, amen. It's open to anybody that wants to be a part of the choir. Our brother Derek is doing a wonderful job, and we praise God for him. We thank God for his gift, his talent, and his ability to lead in this music ministry. We praise God for every praise and worship leader. We thank God for you and your gift. I thank God for each and every one of you here. Amen. We praise God for your presence. I want to go right to the word of God because I want to give you the word of God and then I want to be able to pray. I praise God for our church mother, our deacon, our elders, amen. Our church mothers, amen. Our, our missionary and evangelist, our prayer warrior. I, she's one of those honorary members, amen. Although she has her own church home, she is an honorary member. And I say that for those of you who may not know, Evangelist Campbell is a friend of ours. A family. She is family. Amen. Prior to the pandemic, uh, she served as my father's secretary. And even through, she served as my secretary. And when we get fully open again, she's coming back to work with us. Amen. 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 She's a wonderful woman of God. She loves God. She loves my father. And for that, I love her. And, uh, and she loves us. And she shows that. Uh, through her kind words, she checks on us, uh, she reaches out and lets us know that she's praying for us, and those kind of people you just don't forget, amen. Amen. To all of our first-time visitors, if this is your first time, we want you to know that we appreciate you, we're glad to see you, and that we love you tonight. Uh, to my little niece back there, thank you. it's so good to see you, baby, put a smile on your face, we love you. There you go, you can smile, it's all right to smile, there you go, that's all right, there you go, it's all right to smile. 
Amen. We're a family church. Amen. We want to go to the Word of God. To our musicians, we praise God for you. Wonderful. The Word of God is found in Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. And you know, out of reverence for the Word, we stand. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. And I'm reading from the King James Version. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will give it, if thou therefore wilt worship me and shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to speak to you tonight from this topic, don't forfeit your future. Don't forfeit your future. Encourage somebody today and say, don't forfeit your future. Uh, for those of you who know me, you know I love movies. I don't get a chance to see them as much as I used to, but there was one movie that came out way before I was born in 1971. And it was called, yeah, some of y'all were around. It was called Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Y'all remember? And uh, it was about <laughs> these children, interesting candy maker who was searching for a pure child to be his successor and to learn the mysteries of his various inventions regarding candy. And as the families entered the factory, they all were mandated to sign a waiver. And the waiver had a list of items that would disqualify them from winning the contest and inheriting the factory. There were temptations all around that these children, all but one, failed to overcome the temptation and win the grand prize of winning the factory. Some of y'all remember one girl turned into a massive blueberry. One young man drowned in the pool of chocolate. Uh, somebody else, a lot of things, one young man got shrunk on the TV and all these other things, but then there was one, this one little unsuspecting boy named Charlie. He was the only one that seemed to be able to overcome, and even he had a minor setback with his grandfather. But Willy Wonka was gracious to the little child and his family and turned the factory over to him, securing his and his family's future. In this text, Jesus is preparing himself for his public ministry. And as the Spirit of God moves him into a season of fasting for 40 days, the Bible lets us know that number 40 means testing and trials. Every time you see any variation of the number 40, whether it's 40, 400, or 4,000, it references testing or trials. And so he was in the wilderness fasting for 40 days. How many of us can fast 40 days? The Bible says he had nothing. He ate no bread. He had no water. He fasted 40 days. And so now while he's been tested and tried with abstaining from food and water, guess what? He's also being tried by the devil himself. 
He, the devil waits until Jesus got to his weakest moment after he had finished his fast, after he had finished abstaining from food and water. That's how the devil likes to do. He likes to wait till you're at your weakest to try to break you. And so he approached Jesus three times after the completion of his fast. In fact, Satan's first approach to uh, Jesus, it says in Luke 4, chapter 3, and the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone to me made bread. But you got to understand the devil knows how to play on your weakness. He knows how to speak to your situations. He knows how to speak and make things look good that may not be good for us. He was talking to Jesus about his physical hunger. He said, if you be the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. And don't you know Jesus did have the power to turn the, turn the stones into bread, but Jesus understand, he understood that it was just Satan trying to lure him into a trap and a snare that, to get him under his thumb. And Jesus recognizing who he was in himself and he recognizing who Satan was, he responds with this familiar verse. In fact, he said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone. Meaning you can't just eat the bread, the, the bread that we bake in the oven that the yeast ca uh, causes to rise, but by every word of God. And so now Satan lost number one. Round one, Satan lost. But how many know that Satan doesn't stop after round one? He's like the energizer bunny. He just keeps going and going and going. And every time you think you got him beat, he's coming from another side. And so here he comes his second time in Luke chapter 4 verse 5. And the devil taking him up in a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee in the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and whomsoever I will give it to. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Now, now what the devil didn't realize is that you can't give somebody something that already belongs to them. Okay, let me give you some Bible. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. How is Satan going to take the Son of God up to a pinnacle and offer him something that already belongs to him? That's how foolish the devil is. But sometimes when we are weak in our flesh and weak in our life, we fall victim to the foolishness of the devil. Because we have to understand if we are on the Lord's side, victory already belongs to us. But if we're not in the will of God, the enemy will make us feel like we're on the losing end of the war, on the, on the losing end of the battle but Jesus recognized that you can't give me something that belongs to me and Jesus he said recognizing again who he was and who Satan was he responds to him he doesn't even give him credence he said get behind me Satan and sometimes you ain't even got a war with the devil you just got to tell the devil to get behind me Satan that's not the second that's not the only time that Jesus said that in fact when you talk to Peter he was excited about the, Jesus and Elijah and Moses and he said Lord let us build three tabernacles one for Elijah one for Moses and one for thee and what did Jesus say he said get behind me Satan because sometimes the enemy likes to be in front of you blocking your view so that you cannot see what God is trying to do and instead of going back and forth with the devil Jesus just said get behind me Satan for it is written that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thy serve and sometimes we got to realize that sometimes as I told us on Thursday night we make things and we make ideas our gods and when we make other things our God we got to be very careful because we'll get caught in the act of idolatry and when we get caught in the act of idolatry God said I'll have no other God before me and Jesus understood you can't give me anything that's going to make me first of all that belongs to me second of all that's going to make me miss God so he told Satan to get behind me and you think Satan will stop there absolutely not Satan refusing to stop he tries for a third time and Satan, uh, he tries to make Jesus forfeit his power and forfeit his future. Satan comes back with his last shot when he, in Luke 4 verse 9, he brought him to Jerusalem, the capital city, and he set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast down thyself from hence. Meaning throw yourself down, jump off this cliff. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Now, that sounds crazy to me. 
That sounds like somebody who's having some mental issues We're going to jump off a cliff to see if they can fly. Now, now, I know R. Kelly wrote a song, I Can Believe I Can Fly, but Jesus was smarter than that. He did not allow Satan to push him over. Uh -huh. Satan said, you just jump off. And Jesus very well could have called his angels to rescue him. But Jesus understood the magnitude of what was happening. He responded and he was determined and focused and responded to him. In verse 12, he said, it is said that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Just because I know I have the capacity to do it, that doesn't mean that it's wise for me to do it in this moment. Then text said uh, that Satan departed from Jesus for a season. Now, you got to understand the word for a season means just a moment in time. Because Jesus would also encounter Satan along his public ministry. And then he would even encounter Satan as he went to Calvary. But Jesus was underrated. Jesus was undeterred and unmoved because he knew that there was a future that he had to fight for. And so now just as the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the enemy has and is yet trying to lure us with treats. He's trying to lure us with treats. He's trying to lure us with eye candy. He's trying to lure us with attractive things that pull us away from God. He's learned to play on our emotions as well as manipulate our needs and our lack to convince us to bow to him, causing us to forfeit our future that God has for us. You know, you have to understand the enemy is cunning. He ain't strong. He's just cunning. He's manipulative. He knows how to play to your emotions, how to play to what you're losing, how to play to areas of your life that are, are not doing so well. And what he'll do is he'll present opportunity or what seems like opportunity to draw you in. And what you got to realize what the devil does. And never forget this illustration that my father painted. What the devil will do is he'll walk with you all the way out to the middle of the ocean, promising you something thing in the middle of the ocean and then he'll let your hand go and walk away from you watching you drown and laughing at you only because you were foolish enough to trust the devil if you know that a snake is a snake you know that a snake is going to ultimately bite you so why play with a snake and then when you get bit with a snake bit by the snake why are you surprised that you got bit by something that that does what it does all the devil does is lie cheat steal and manipulate and so if you know that's what the devil does, why well, think it's strange when he's doing what he always does? He plays on our heartstrings. He plays on our desires. He plays on our hopes and try to pull us away from what God has purposed in our lives. He, 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 in hopes of us voluntarily forfeiting our future. And forfeiting our blessings. Can I tell you something? The devil can't take nothing from you. All he can do is make you forfeit it. I want you to know the devil don't have no power. People say the devil made me do it. No, the devil can't make you do nothing. All he can do is entice you to do. He doesn't have the power. The Bible didn't say he was a roaring lion. He was like as unto a roaring lion. But he is not a roaring lion. The devil only has power that we submit to. That's why the Bible says submit yourself also to the Lord. Resist the devil and he'll what? He'll flee from you. And so to ensure that we don't allow the enemy to cause us to forfeit our future, we must do number one. Number one, we got to stay focused. Somebody say stay focused. If you go to Proverbs 4, 25 through 27, and I'm reading from the New International Version, it says, let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you and give careful thought to the path for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways and do not turn to the right or the left, but keep your foot from evil. Now, you got to understand that Solomon encourages us as we, like Jesus, was in the wilderness. We must stay focused. Somebody say focus. Focus on what God has before us. It's so easy in today's world and today's society to be distracted looking away from God and seeing the path that he has laid before us. But we must be fully determined. We must be fully determined and fully determined to stay focused. It is so true that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And one of the things he endeavors to steal is our focus. When he steals our focus, he also steals our peace. As the scripture says, those who mind are stayed on him shall be in 
perfect peace. Uh -huh. Focus means to forget other concerns and use your sense. Uh, forget F, other concerns and use your sense. Um, that means we can't be swayed or distracted by things uh, that are temporal uh, and things that are meaningless and the sense that God gave us to remain focused on the task and the assignment that God has given us so that we can fulfill it. Not only will we be blessed, but we will also be a blessing to somebody else. Um, I know everybody wants to be blessed, uh, but I ask God to not only bless me, but let me be a blessing, uh, a blessing to somebody else. So my life is more than just for me and mine, but my life is worth the, uh, helping someone else. And so when we are focused, it enables us not only to be blessed, but it also causes us to be a blessing. And this is important because we must learn to, which is my second point, we must learn to protect our assignment. Somebody say, protect my assignment. Luke 9 and 62, in the NIV version, Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. As Luke wants us to know, brothers and sisters, if we get distracted and if we look back, we're not fit for the service in the kingdom of God. I said if we get distracted and if we get look back, the Bible says we're not fit for the service in the kingdom of God. Well, I understand if I'm going to make it to heaven, i got to be in the service in the kingdom of God. And so if I'm not fit for the kingdom of God, how am I going to make it into heaven? So I've got to keep my focus and I've got to protect my assignment. We must know the value of our God-given assignments. And we can't afford to be cavalier. We can't afford to be nonchalant. We can't afford to be irresponsible with our God-given assignment. Now, God has called all of us for a specific reason and a specific purpose. But he's also called us to, to that for just a limited time. Now, for the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, now, and after that the judgment. Don't you know all of us going to leave here one day? Whether we like it or not, I don't care what science uh, uh, breakthroughs they have, we all going to leave here <clears throat> one day. And this means whatever God has worked us to do, we have to protect and complete that assignment with all diligence and all commitment. Now, we don't have the luxury of picking it up and putting it down as we desire, now, but we must remember that the devil comes to steal. Now, what does he come to steal? He comes to steal our assignments. Um, he comes to steal, here it is, our anointing. Now, he, he comes to steal the favor that God has on our life. Now, he comes to steal our Ah joy. Now, I remember growing up in the sunshine, man, we would say, don't let the devil now, steal your joy. Now, he comes to steal our purpose. He comes to steal our minds. He comes to steal our desires. He comes to steal our faith, and ultimately, he comes to steal our lives. Uh, but as Paul said to the church at Philippi, in Philippians 4 and 7, it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request or let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we must always be on guard. I said again, we must must always be on guard now, and we must always protect our assignments uh, because the devil wants to ultimately steal our assignment. Uh, he wants to steal our earthly future uh, and ultimately steal our eternal future. Uh, and the only problem is that uh, if he doesn't have the ability to steal it, uh, he can only entice us to forfeit it. Uh, this brings me to my last point. Uh, we've got to be faithful to our future. We got to be faithful to our future. Revelations 2 and 10 says, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Now, I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you now, and will suffer persecution for 10 days. Uh, but be faithful even to the point of death, uh, and I will give you a crown of life. Uh, 
Our second, our future is twofold. Uh, we have an earthly future uh, and we have an eternal future. Uh, uh-huh. And both of our futures are dependent upon how we handle the responsibility of our now. Uh, because we know the law of reciprocity, we understand that whatever we sow, uh, we will also reap. Uh, the Bible says it like this, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Uh, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, this is why we should live every day and every moment uh, as if it were our last. Uh, but also remember that there's going to be a payday coming after a while. Now, I remember growing up, they would say, put your time in. Now, payday is coming after a while. Now, what we do or what we don't do, it will determine where both our natural and eternal future will be. Now, we have to be faithful to our future because Jeremiah reminds us in Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts that I think toward you said the Lord that thoughts of peace and not of evil uh, to give you some one writer said a future and a hope uh, another writer said to give you an expected end now, but I believe brothers and sisters according to the word of God that, that believers who obey I'm gonna say that again that, that believers who obey I'm gonna say that again that, that believers who obey God uh, will have have a hope and a future that mirrors God's favor on our lives. Does this mean that we won't have trials, tribulations, or that we won't suffer? No, because all that will godly will suffer persecution. But it means that the glory of our latter houses will be greater of that of our former houses. And we are not at a place where we can afford to jeopardize our future with foolish things, the foolish things of the world or foolish people or being foolish with our time or being foolish with our talent or even being foolish with our resources. But we must be faithful to our future knowing that the earth and the, the, knowing that on earth that the Lord will bless the works of our hands knowing that he will prosper our endeavors, knowing that he will increase our coast, knowing that he will enlarge our territories knowing that he will give us favor and knowing that he will cause us to triumph over our enemies, knowing that he will give us victory. Now, how do I know the Lord will give us victory? Paul wrote to us in Corinthians, but thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then eternally the Lord will give us rest. He will give us a mansion. He will give us a crown of righteousness. He will give us and welcome us into his eternal kingdom. And he will fulfill every promise that he made to us. Brothers and sisters, understanding the power of death and life is in the tongue. Now, uh, when we allow the word to be our scale and put the weight on the word as we speak the word in our now, what happens is the word will grow in our future. Now, when we speak the word of God in our now, now the word of God will grow in our future. Now, and the beautiful thing about the word is that John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And in that same chapter, verse 14, it says, and the word became flesh, and it dwelt among men, and we beheld the glory of the only begotten, son of the father now, it tells us exactly what we need to know about the word and when we insert the word into our future now, dark places are then lit up broken places are then repaired dead places are then resurrected low places are made high and sad places are filled with joy and lost things are found and sick things are healed and fell things are recovered Empty things are filled and crooked things are straightened. And dirty things are made clean because just as the word was spoken by God in the book of Genesis and he created a future for us here on earth. When we speak the word in our now, it creates a future for us not only here on earth but one here in eternity. And I came to tell you today that the enemy wants to snatch our future from us. He wants to take the future from the believer. And the reason he wants to take your future because he knows his future.
future. He also realizes his past. He's been in the presence of God. In fact, he was the one that was the angel that was kicked out of heaven. He's been at the feet of God. He knows what it's like to be in the presence of God all day. And instead of allowing you to get there, he wants you to suffer like he's going to suffer. He knows that his time is not long. He knows that when Jesus cracks the sky, that's going to be it for him. And so his goal and his charge is to get as many people out of the will of God, away from the power of God as he can, so he can destroy you as he's going to be destroyed. That he can, you can burn and you can suffer eternally just as he's going to suffer. But I made up in my mind tonight, I refuse to forfeit my future to a devil that's already defeated. I refuse to forfeit my future to a devil that's nothing but a liar. I refuse to forfeit my future to a devil that has no power. I refuse to forfeit my future to an enemy that can never win because God is the greatest power. He can never be defeated. What am I trying to tell you today, brothers and sisters? Don't play with the devil because all he wants to do is keep you dirty. So when you stand before God, you won't be presented faultless, but he'll be throwing you all the dirt. God, this is what your daughter did. God, this is what your son did. God, how you going to bless them? And they ain't been obedient to you. How you going to give them? And they won't even adhere to your instructions. We don't have time to play with the devil because we're in the process of forfeiting our future. But I believe that when we get in the will of God, the safest place is in the will of God. But when we get in the will of God, we'll experience the power of God and the favor of God. And I came to tell you that the favor of God is not limited to money, but the favor of God is God's protection, it's God's provision, it's God's way out of no way. And some of us right now, if we could see our future in the spirit, we would leave some of the people we mess with alone. If we see our future in the spirit, some of the habits that we have, we would break them on our own. If we can see our future in the spirit, some of the struggles that we say are struggles, we'd be able to drop off because I see you in the future and you look much better than you do right now. I wish I had somebody that knows that your future it's going to be greater than your past. Where you're going is going to be better than where you come from. But it all depends on how you respond. How will you respond to the call of God on your life? How you respond to the assignment that God has placed on your life? Some of us, if we really knew what God had in store for us, we wouldn't play with God the way we do. What do you mean play with God? Sometimes we're faithful and sometimes we're not. Sometimes we're hot and sometimes we're cold. Sometimes we're in and sometimes we're out. But I came to tell you that if you be faithful to God, God will be faithful to you. If you be loyal to God, God will be loyal to you. If you be committed to God, God will be committed to you. When you bless God, God has to bless you. When you lift God, God has to lift you. When you exalt God, God will exalt you. When you praise God, God will raise you. When you magnify God, God will magnify you in the spaces that you need to be magnified in because he has a future in store for us. He has a future in store for you. He has a future that doesn't look like what your friends say. You got a future, what it's going to cost me. Will you cry sometimes? Sure. Will you hurt sometimes? Sure. But it just won't work because God has a plan for your life and my life. And if we stick to the script that you find in the word of God, you'll find out that in the end that you're going to win in every situation. You'll have the victory in every storm. You'll have a shelter in every way. There'll be a provision in every war. He'll be your battle axe in every situation. He'll have your back. I wonder if there's anybody here that knows that you got a future and you don't want to allow the devil to steal your future. You ought to make a declaration, a declaration tonight and say, I will not forfeit my future for a little bit of candy. I will not forfeit my 
future uh, for a little bit of attractiveness, uh, for a little fame, uh, for a little money. Uh, because I found out uh, that if I live right, uh, whatever I ask the Lord, uh, he'll bring it to pass. Uh, one writer said, if I delight myself uh, in the Lord, uh, he will. Uh, he'll give me the desires uh, of my heart. Uh, that's why. I understand uh, why the enemy is attacking us because he knows uh, if we ever reach our full potential, uh, we'll be a threat to his kingdom. Uh, everything he's trying to do, uh, we have the power to tear it down. Uh, and I ain't going to allow the devil uh, to take nothing that belongs to me. Uh, if it's mine and my name's on it, uh, I'm going after it. Uh, and I'm going to get it. Uh, if it's my children, uh, if it's my family, uh, if it's my marriage, uh, if it's my finances, uh, if it's my health, yeah, if it's my mind, yeah, if it's grandchildren, yeah, if it's my business, yeah, whatever God says is mine, yeah, I'm going after it. Yeah, and I'm not going to allow the devil yeah, to make me forfeit it. Yeah, in fact, Satan, yeah, let me tell you what I know. Yeah, the Lord rebuke you yeah, and the blood, the blood of Jesus yeah, is against you yeah, because I found out yeah, there's still power yeah, in the blood, yeah, wonder-working power yeah, in the blood, yeah, saving power yeah, in the blood, yeah, healing power yeah, in the blood, yeah, deliverance power yeah, in the blood, yeah, liberating power yeah, in the blood, yeah, the blood yeah, that Jesus said yeah, on Calvary, yeah, it reaches yeah, to the highest mountain yeah, and it flows uh, to the lowest valley. Yeah, it still works uh, after 2,000 years. Uh, it still works. Yeah, it still washes uh, and it still cleanses. Uh, it still gives me power uh, from day to day. Uh, and because of the blood, uh, I'm going to hold on to my future uh, because Jesus uh, on his way to Calvary, uh, he realized uh, that there was a future uh, for you and I. Uh, he didn't say a mumbling word uh, because there was a future uh, for you and I. Uh, he took every last uh, because there was a future uh, for you and I. Uh, he took the crown of thorns uh, because there was a future uh, for you and I. Uh, he nailed to the cross uh, because there was a future for you and I. Uh, they lifted him up uh, because there was a future uh, for you and I. Uh, and Jesus said, uh, if I uh, be lifted up uh, from all the earth, uh, I will, uh, I'll draw all in. Uh, he was talking about you and me. Uh, he didn't say, uh, he didn't come off the cross uh, because there was a future uh, for you and I. Uh, he stayed there. Uh, they pierced him uh, in his side uh, because there was a future uh, for you and I. Uh, he shed uh, his blood uh, because there was a future uh, for you and I. Uh, and then uh, my Lord and Savior, uh, he died uh, on the cross uh, because there was a future uh, for you and I. Uh, they laid him uh, in a borrowed tomb uh, because there was a future uh, for you and I. Uh, and he stayed there uh, until early one day uh, on that third day morning. Uh, he said, now nah, uh, I'm going to give them a hope uh, and I'm going to give them a future. Uh, my Bible says uh, he got out of the grave uh, and he got up with all power. Uh, power in his hand. Uh, power over the devil. Uh, power over sin. Uh, power over sickness. Uh, power over diseases. Uh, power over death. Uh, power over depression. Uh, power over sickness. Uh, power over cancer. Uh, over diabetes. Uh, over high blood, uh, over low blood, uh, over endometriosis, uh, over lupus, uh, over everything. Uh, he got up uh, with power, uh, Holy Ghost power. Uh, and because he lives, uh, I can face tomorrow. Uh, because he lives, uh, all fear is gone. Uh, that's how I know uh, I got a future. Uh, because he died uh, so that I can live. Uh, he became poor uh, so that I can be rich 
He became sick so that I could be healed. He became sinful flesh so that I could be saved. Somebody shout glory. Shout glory. Got a future. I don't care how dark it looks right now in your life. We've got a future. As individuals, we got a future. As a, as a congregation, we have a future. As the body of Christ, we have a future. The devil likes to paint the picture that all is lost. When we look at our world and we look at what's happening in our cities and communities. He likes to paint the picture that all is lost. But I came to rebuke that spirit now. We have a future. And our future is much brighter than what our past has been. I don't watch the news because I live the news every day. In my career, I see the news right before my eyes. I'm dealing with families. I'm seeing some of the news in our business. And just over the last few days, we've seen it's been crazy reckless out here. And the devil wants us to believe that that's all that's out here. To discourage us, to make us believe that our future is not bright. But I come to find out that God is the God of all. Not only is he the God of all, but he sees all. He sits high and he looks low. But he also has power to change, turn things around and change people around. You don't, believe, you don't believe me? Let me give you some Bible. If you read Acts chapter 9, you'll, feed, you'll hear Saul, a.k.a. Paul's story. And if God can change, I like to call him a serial killer. If God can change a serial killer into an apostle, what do you think he can do to, to those in our city? If God can take a serial killer and make him the most, the most uh, prolific pro proclamator of the gospel, what do you think he can do with our young people in our city? The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, if they would just humble themselves and pray, if they would just seek my face and then do what? Turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Then will I forgive their sins. And then I will heal their land. I don't believe it's hopeless. And the Lord has been dealing with me about this thing called hopelessness. I don't believe that it's hopeless for our world. I don't believe that it's hopeless for our city, our communities, our families, our youth, or even for you as an individual. I believe that God has a greater future in store for you. I believe it because he wrote it in his word. He told us he has a hope and a future for us. And the only way we can access that future is that we put our hand in God's hands and we don't let go got to put our hands in God's hands and don't let go. Not only do we need to put our hands in God's hands, I told you before, we have to be obedient to the word of God. And I know people don't like to preach that nowadays because that means we have to sacrifice some stuff. That means we have to let go of some stuff. That means we have to make some alterations in our life. And a, a lot of times we like to be comfortable in the sin that we're in. Not the skin. We want to be comfortable in the sin that we're in. But if you, want to, if you really want to experience God's restoration and God's move in your life now and your future, the Bible says lay aside every way and the sin that so easily beset us and let us run the race before us with patience. Don't you know that when you surrender totally to God, God has a way of expediting your future. Time that you thought you lost, he'll, re he'll redeem it so fast. And people are wondering how you made it. And you can tell them only by the grace of God. I'm not here. And the more I get into my studies, I'm not here to necessarily excite you through the word. But I'm here to inspire you inspire you to make a change, inspire you to make transformation. Here's this word again, 
inspiring you to make a conversion. It's great to come to worship. It's great to come to church. But you have to be intentional about your own conversion. If you want to be right, you God can make you right. If you want to be free, God can make you free. If you want to be delivered, God can deliver you. But you have to be intentional about your conversion. Nobody can do it for you. Mama can't do it. Daddy can't do it. No matter how much people want you to be. If you want to be converted, you have to be honest with yourself and say, I'm really messed up. And that's not a bad thing to say, I'm messed up. Because the first step to even recovery is to acknowledge that you have a problem. And then after you acknowledge that you've messed up, then you can ask God to clean you up. One great king said it this way, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew in me a right spirit. When you understand you messed up and you ask God to forgive you, he is faithful and just to forgive you for all of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If there's anybody here tonight, you know you got some stuff that you really need God to deliver you from some issues you really need God to deal with internally tonight is for you. I know Sunday mornings are a little different because we, we have structure and we have so many other things going. But if you want to be free from whatever it is you're dealing with tonight, I encourage you to come to this altar. It's about you right now. Not about anybody else. Come to this altar. Come to the altar. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just come, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just come. Whatever you need, come now, oh, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just come, come. here to judge you. I don't care if you come to church every Sunday. If you're not saved and you want to be saved, come to the altar. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost and you want the Holy Ghost, I want you to come to the altar. Come down. If you got problems and issues that you're dealing with and you need to turn to the Lord, come to the altar. He will save you. Mothers, just now.
altar, I need, this is what I want you to do. Brother Derek, can you do me a favor? If you would just watch the door for me, I got the deacon coming. What I want you to do, first of all, I want you to close your eyes and lift your hands. For those of you that are on the altar, close your eyes and lift your hands. And I don't want you to worry about nothing else around you. I want you to think about nothing else around you. I just want you to put your mind on Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, here I am. I know that I'm nothing without you. And I need your help right now. You know my life. You know my story. You know my problems and my issues. But I believe that there's nothing too hard for you. You're able to meet me right where I am. And you're able to pull me up and pull me out. I ask you right now to strengthen me, help me, save me again, wash me over again, strengthen me, fill me with your Holy Ghost that I can be an overcomer, bind the devil, bind every attack, bind the force of evil, bind every enemy in the name of Jesus and have your way in my life, have your way in my soul. Have your way in my mind. Have your way in my heart. Do a new thing in me. Do it now, Jesus. Do it now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I'll say yes. I'll say yes to your will. Yes to your way. Now you keep talking to the Lord. That's all I want you to do. The prayer warriors are here to pray. Those of you that I've asked to be prayer warriors, you can begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I ask you, God, that you would touch this young man from the crown of his head. God, you know hallelujah, hallelujah to Jesus. You know all about him, hallelujah. You know his down setting and his uprising. You know his going out and his coming in. Father, I pray that you will strengthen him. I pray that you will save him again. Wash him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Every attack of the enemy, every demonic force, everything that comes to destroy his future, Satan, the Lord rebuke you and the blood of Jesus is against you. Drop your weapons and flee right now. Oh God, we plead the blood over his life, the blood over his mind, the blood over his spirit, the blood in his soul now. In the name of Jesus, oh I declare now you be healed. I declare you be healed in your mind, healed in your body, healed in your soul, healed in your spirit, healed from your past, healed now. In the name of Jesus, you be delivered. You be set free, God. In the name of Jesus, do it right now, God. Do it for his good, but do it for your glory. In the name of Jesus, have your way now, God. Have your way, God. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, do a new thing in a now. Do a new thing in a now. Every stronghold, break every better, God. Loose every chain, God. Cast the devil away, God. In the name of Jesus. Satan, take your hands off. He belongs to God. Everything that he is, everything that he is to become, he belongs to God. Have your way in his soul. Have your way in his mind. Oh, Jesus, deliver him now, God. Tear down every stubborn will. Destroy every yoke, God. Break every fetter, God. Loose every chain, God. In the name of Jesus, for by your strike, God, we are healed today. Heal the brokenness. Heal the hurt, God. Heal the past, God. Heal frustration. Heal anger, God. In the name of Jesus, do a new thing in their life. Do a new thing in their heart. Do a new thing in their soul. Do a new thing in their life. In the name of Jesus, cast the devil away. Give strength now, uh, where they're weak, God. Uh, build them up, God, uh, where they're torn down. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, shine your light, God. Uh, your light from heaven uh, down on their soul. Uh, and God, restore, God. Uh, restore, God. Uh, renew, God. Uh, renew, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I know you're able. Uh, I know you can. Uh, I know you will. Uh, you've got all power uh, in your hand. Uh, and I believe uh, that, God, you can do it. Uh, for their good, for your glory. Yes, 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say yes. Yes in our soul. Yes in our heart. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. Set them free, God. Set 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 free, God. You know how to do it. You know what to do. But set free, God. Every stronghold. In the name of Jesus. Every God. Every bondage, God. Every chain, God. Oh, God, set them free. Set them free. God, don't let them go, God. Until you bless them, God. We won't let you go. Until you bless us. We won't let you go. Until you deliver us. We won't let you go. Until you heal us. Oh, God, do it right now. Work a miracle, God, in our life. Work a miracle in our hearts. Work a miracle in our souls. In the name of Jesus, we call it on you now. For there's power in your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, do it right now. 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 It right now. For our good. But for your glory. God deliver God. God break every chain. God destroy every yoke. Destroy every yoke. Destroy every yoke. Destroy every yoke. Yeah, no, 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 no. God, no, no, no. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it. Do it, God. Right now, God. For their good. Before your glory. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Save. Save a God. Save. Say that I speak to you. Every stubborn will. Every evil spirit. I'm not asking you, God, but I'm commanding you, God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, to leave this child. Leave a mind. Leave a heart. Leave a soul. In the name of Jesus, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Satan, I declare now that she be set free. Let go of her mind. 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 Take your hands off her mind. Take your hands off her mind. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. Look at me. Lift your hands. And look at me. I know you. I know you're angry about a lot of stuff. And this ain't nothing your mama had to tell me. Look at me. Because I need to speak to you what's on the inside of you. You're angry about a lot of stuff. And it's a trick of the enemy. He wants to destroy you. I want you to hear me. He wants to destroy you. He wants to not just take your mind, he wants to take your life. Are you ready to die? Are you ready to die? Do you want to live? Do you want to live? Talk back to me. You want to live? You don't know? You don't know if you want to live or not? That's an honest answer. Is it that bad that you don't know if you want to live? Okay, lift your hand. All I want you to do is keep saying three words. The only three words I want you to say is save me, Jesus. I want you to say nothing else. You're here because God loves you. God loves you. You may not believe it, but I'm telling you, God loves you. And the reason that you're alive right now because God has put people in your life to save you from the end, what the enemy is trying to do for you. So when I begin to pray for you, I want you to lift your hands all the way up like when you're getting arrested. And all I want you to do is say, save me, Jesus. Just keep saying, save me, Jesus. I want you to pray with her, y'all. Save me, Jesus. Come on, save me, Jesus. Close your eyes. Don't worry about nobody else. Save me, Jesus. 
Ah, don't worry about that. that don't worry, don't worry about that. Say, no, no, don't worry about that. No, no. Save me, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Say it. Say it with me. Save me, Jesus. No, 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 no. It's all right, baby. Save me, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Save me. Save me, Jesus. Come on. Save the Lord. Save the Lord. Yep. Save. Come on. Save me, Jesus. Say it with me. Save me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. Come on. Save me, Jesus. Come on, Diana. Say it. Save me, Jesus. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Save me, Jesus. Come on, open your mouth. You got to say it. Come on, open your mouth. Save me, Jesus. He's going to do it. Save me, Jesus. Yep, yep. Save me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. Come on, save me, Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord, save me, Jesus. Break it down, God. Break it down, God. Break it down, God. Break it down in the name of Jesus. Destroy this, your God. In the name of Jesus. Destroy this, your God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak life now. And I rebuke the hands of the devil. I rebuke the hands of death. God save her, God. Save her, Jesus. Save her, Jesus. Say, come on, open your mouth. Right? Don't get tired. Come on, open your mouth. Save me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. Every stubborn will now. I come against you now. Every stubborn will. Every stubborn will. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. It comes against you now. Every stubborn will. I declare right now. That God, uh, you are the greatest power. Uh, God, work on our now. Uh, work on our mind. Uh, work on our mind. Uh, work on our heart. Uh, break up this heart of stone uh, and give our heart of flesh. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, every evil spirit, uh, every demonic spirit, uh, come out of here now. Hey, da, da, ba, the blood of Jesus, uh, come out now, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I declare now uh, that you will be free. Uh, say that you will not have a God, you will not take us, God. but God we plead the blood. 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 Yes, release now. In the name of Jesus, set free 
yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yep, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yep, yep, yes, Lord. I come against it now in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood, yes. Release her mind. Release her mind. In the name of Jesus. Open up her ears to hear your voice. In the name of Jesus. Every stronghold, every burden. Say that you are a liar. Take your hands off of her now. She belongs to you, God, and she is your daughter. Say that you have no authority or no place to live here. Move by your power, move by your anointing, move by your spirit, and destroy every yoke now. In the name of Jesus, destroy this yoke, this yoke of bondage, this yoke even in her mind. Destroy it and save her to the utmost. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. You are a liar. She doesn't belong to you. You can't have her. You can't take her. You can't use her. You can't deceive her. You can't manipulate her. She's covered in the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood right now. The blood covers. 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 The blood, the blood, the blood covers. Renew life, God. Renew life today. Renew her life today. Give her a new start now. In the name of Jesus, God, deliver her from everything. From everything. Every, even, even the diagnosis, deliver her now. In the name of Jesus, God, make her a miracle. Make her a miracle. Make her, ah, oh my God. Make her a miracle, my God. Make her a miracle. A miracle, God. God, show her signs and wonders. Speak to her in dreams. Yes, Lord. Speak to her in dreams, God. Give her interpretation of dreams, God. Let her be a blessing in her home, God. In the name of anoint her for service. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes, I come against every stigma. I come against every stigma, every preconceived notion. God, you've got the power to deliver, and I want you to deliver her now. Yep, deliver her now. 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 Deliver now, God. Deliver now, God. Deliver her now. In the name of Jesus. Deliver her now. And have your way in her life. Have your way in her soul. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Jesus. 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 Jesus, 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 pour out your spirit now, pour out your spirit now, fill her with the Holy Ghost, fill her with the Holy Ghost, oh, fill her, Jesus, fill her, fill her with the Holy Ghost,
sleep here like you came. In Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, afflicted, sick or lame. Oh, the power of the Lord is still the same. So you leave him like you came. In Jesus' name, bound, oppressed, afflicted, sick or lame, for oh, the power of the Lord is still the same. So you won't leave it. Like you can, I won't leave you. Like I can, we won't leave you. Like we can, in Jesus' name. Everybody say yeah, yeah. Fix it, Lord. Fix it, Lord. 
fix it, Lord. And we'll bless your name. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. We'll give you the praise. Fix it, Jesus. And we'll thank you. And we'll praise you. And we'll bless your name forever. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. like him. So we praise God and we bless God. We praise God and we bless God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. I love when the Lord has his way. gifts and then we're going to just stay right here. I'm asking everybody who can and will just to give a small gift of $20. If you're giving digitally, you know how to do that. If you're giving in person, you can do that too. But everybody who can and will, just get a small gift of $20. That's all, just 20 God for his spirit. Thank God for his power and his anointing. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 And even if you don't have $20, just give the best gift. Thank you for your love and your kindness and your spirit that dwells in this house. Thank you for those, God, that got them whatever they needed, whether it was strength, peace, a breakthrough, healing, miracle. God, we believe, God, for even more as you're going to begin to really open the window of heaven and shine down on us as we prepare to leave from this place but never leave your presence we pray dear God that you will give us traveling mercy protect us from the hands of the enemy every car accident every reckless driver every stray bullet everything that seeks to harm the people of God we pray God that you will take us to our various destinations safe and sound and bring us back together at the appointed time and we will be careful to give your name praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' awesome and mighty name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah.
hug somebody and let them know you love them and remember that I love you to life. God bless you.